let's go ahead and get into our first story. We're going to dive into this TikTok discussion. So for those who are not aware, uh, the House has actually uh, passed the TikTok bill. Now, there's a lot of like dispute over whether or not this actually bans TikTok. It doesn't actually ban TikTok, but it's basically making these demands that it has to be removed from China ownership basically, or the company ByteDance has to drop away from TikTok. We'll get into this in the video. Uh, and basically what they're trying to do is they're trying to, the U S government actually wants an American entity to own and control TikTok, and more likely a Zionist. And I'm going to tell you uh, why that's important and why I'm saying what I'm saying, because there's been a lot of discussion about this TikTok ban. And there's one key component that some people are leaving out which is where is this, this demand actually coming from? It's not coming from Congress. Let's go ahead and get started with this video here. Uh, this is the reaction from some TikTokers in reference to uh, the House deciding to vote on this legislation and some of the demands that were made. Let's get into this and shout out to Case Study QB for this one. If you haven't already heard, the U.S. government is trying to permanently shut down TikTok. TikTok has gotten so desperate that they're sending out SOS messages on the app, begging people to call their U.S. Congress representatives. Hi, I'm calling to um, ask about the TikTok ban. Hi, I'm calling about the TikTok ban. Vote no on the TikTok ban, HR 7521. HR 7521. Call your representative. Tell them to vote no, and if they don't, you're going to vote them out in the primaries. Last week, the social media app TikTok urged its 170 million American users to call their representatives in Congress. By noon the same day, the phone lines for members of the House, members of Congress, were overwhelmed with calls, mostly from teenagers. Some congressional aides said their offices received hundreds of calls in a matter of hours. But despite or maybe because of how much TikTok clearly matters to young Americans, today the House overwhelmingly passed the bill that all of these TikTok users urged their representatives not to pass. And let me pause here because I do want you to see the numbers because I want you to understand that this bill, HR 7521, had bipartisan support. So this is not something that was just led by the Republicans or led by the Democrats. They came together for bipartisan support uh, in reference to this particular bill. And what people also have to understand is this is not just about TikTok. This is about the government having control over what types of apps that you can download, over what type of websites that act can actually exist. It's just basically like the Patriot Act 2.0. The Patriot Act to the 10th power, them trying to control where we get our information from. And this, in my opinion, is a form of fascism. Now, I've heard a number of Democrat politicians call out the Republican Party for being fascist. They have called out the Freedom Cau Caucus for being fascist. They called out Donald Trump for being fascist. But even under the Democratic Party, they are also implementing fascism, whether it's not just this TikTok uh, bill here. There have been other examples of this. There have been the mandates, which I said before was a form of fascism to tell people that they have to, they're mandated to get the jab in order to keep their federal jobs, right? This is a problem. Fascism is happening under both parties, under the Democratic Party and under the Republican Party. So when people use these talking points and they say that we have to stop fascism is right at the front door. If Donald Trump wins, we are dealing with fascism right now under Joe Biden. What it shows you is that both parties basically bend the knee for the state of Israel and for the Israeli lobby and for the corporations. Regardless, it doesn't matter if they're conservative or Democrat. Let's continue. HR 7521. I should say that despite how TikTok framed the bill to its users, this is not an immediate TikTok ban. The way this bill is written, TikTok's Chinese parent company, ByteDance, has six months to sell the company to a buyer approved by the U.S. government, or it will be banned from app stores. A buyer that is approved by the U.S. government. And I'm pretty sure I want to guarantee you, I, if I had to make a guess, I would guess that that buyer would probably be a Zionist. Because let's talk about something for a second, folks. Congress had no problem 
when thousands of people were using TikTok and they were creating dance videos, when people were trying to, you know, simulate dances, hey, your turn, let's see if you can do it. Let's stitch this video together. They had no problem when people were just basically being dancing zombies all over tickety tock. But the moment that people started talking about Israel, Gaza, Ukraine, China, Russia on TikTok, and TikTok basically became the go-to place for like two minute, three minute news, then they had a problem because they wanna control the source of information. They want us to continue to be dancing zombies instead of educating ourselves about foreign policy. Therefore gone. But before we even get to that six month countdown, the bill still has to pass the Senate. And then it has to be signed into law by President, Ob President Biden. And the politics in- Did you guys notice what she did there? Watch this when she says president. This is kind of funny. To pass the Senate. And then it has to be signed into law by President Ob Ob President Biden. She almost said President Obama. <laughs> and the politics involved in passing those hurdles are not exactly straightforward. This bill has made a lot of very weird bedfellows. You have Democrats like Maxwell Frost lined up against the bill with the likes of Marjorie Taylor Greene and Matt Gates. They all have freedom of speech issues with the bill, although definitely not the same freedom of speech issues. And the proponents of the bill are also a rather unusual group. Speaker Emerita Nancy Pelosi, for example, is working with far right rabble rouser Chip Roy. But no, they're not an unusual group. Uh, Nancy Pelosi and Chip Roy are not an unusual group because both of them are corporate. They both take corporate money. They support Wall Street. They support the military industrial complex. Just because they're in different political parties doesn't mean they're like this different group. At the end of the day, they still have common interests. Now, we're going to move on to this portion here because I want you to hear this guy because when I talked about a uh, common interest I want you to listen to what this TikToker said about how quickly our government can come together when it's something like censorship how quickly our government can come together to prevent us from getting certain sources of information but how they fail to come together when it comes to helping the American people. Listen to this guy. I have been screaming for so long about the TikTok ban that I am out of screams. This is me actually angry. 352 members of the United States House of Representatives voted to ban TikTok today. That's 81%. I want you to think about the last time you heard 81% of our Congress agreeing on anything. Think about anything for the last four years. 81%. Shit, to pick the Speaker of the House, it took 18 votes and he barely got through. Remember that? Remember how many times we, this year alone, we've had to have votes for the Speaker of the House, but TikTok ban, they're right there. They are voting to ban the complaint box rather than listen to a single complaint on this fucking app. They see us talking to each other. They see us seeing the humanity in each other's eyes. I don't care if you got a red hat or a fucking septum piercing. I hear your complaints and I see the world you're standing in. I'm not reading your tweet out of context. I'm listening to your voice. I've learned so much from this app over the last two years. And the biggest thing was to stop judging my fellow Americans like they are on some other fucking team. We are all just countrymen walking around together. We're all just people trying to get to the end of the day. We're all trying to make enough money so we can raise our kids, kiss them on the forehead, and hope that when we send them to school, they come home tomorrow. That's all we fucking want. And instead, has our Congress done anything to move forward on a Voting Rights Act? No. To make sure women can have health care? No. Maternity leave? No. The minimum wage has been stuck at the same fucking amount for 15 years. 
Have we moved forward on any of these things? No. But we can get 81% of the most corrupt motherfuckers to walk around directly from their country clubs to go to their government job with their government paycheck, with their fucking government car that I fucking pay for. That we pay for. Think about all the perks that they have as politicians that we pay for that our tax dollars actually fund and they're not even serving us. They're not even serving their base. They're not serving their constituents and we continue to vote for them. That doesn't make any sense. And they could go onto the floor of the house of fucking representatives that we all fucking pay for and tell us, no, no, we're doing it to protect your data. We're doing it because we're worried about the algorithm. Meanwhile, my data has been stolen 16 times in the last five years. You want to know how, how I know that? Because I've been in 16 class action lawsuits about my stolen fucking data that I didn't even know was stolen. One day I open the mail and there's a fucking mailer with a check for $5. Sorry, sorry, your fucking data got stolen. Your social security was found on the dark web because some chuckle fuck couldn't follow a goddamn regulation that was written in 1973. I am 39 years old. I have been told my entire fucking life that we need 60 votes in this goddamn Senate. And they're about to find it. We didn't have 60 votes to protect any of our shit. We got kids going to school every fucking day, terrified they're not gonna go home. We got kids not wanting to give up their phones, not because of TikTok, because they're worried if somebody comes into their school, they want to be able to call their fucking parents to say goodbye. Any movement? Do we have 352 congressmen worried about that shit? No. No. Because they're all bought and paid for. No. That's that. this. I'll mention. Let me let them finish and I'll mention something else. But oh, no. Oh, no. A bunch of tech bros want to buy up all the TikTok data and use it to train AI models to put more people out of work? No, 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 put me in Congress. Fucking put me in Congress then. Write my name the fuck in. I'll line up, I'll take all of their fucking money. I'll take all that goddamn lobbyist money. And you know what? I'll make sure it says paid brand deal in the bottom corner. Because when you're a fucking influencer, you have to disclose where the money comes from. But when you're a congressman, ah, that's the price of freedom. He's angry and rightfully so. Now, what's missing from that conversation? The why? Why is this happening? Why are they willing to come together for something like censorship, right? And suppression, but not come together for things that would actually help the people. Everybody don't even have health care in this country. Are you kidding me? We have other countries in the West that give everyone health care. They, they won't do that. They couldn't even come together to increase the minimum wage. They, they couldn't even do that. It's always when it's for the people. And that's because we're not the ones that are paying them. We're not the ones lobbying. The Israeli lobby is. Why is it that that bill was rushed through? Why is it that they were willing to come together in such bipartisan support and support it? Because the Israeli lobby told them to. That is who is really behind all of this. There was leaked audio from Jonathan Greenblatt. Now, Jonathan Greenblatt, he is the chief executive of the ADL, which is the Anti-Defamation League, is also a Zionist organization. That is where this comes from. This demand is not about China as much as they're telling you it is. It's not about China. This demand did not come from Congress. This demand came from the Israeli lobby and the ADL. And that is why they rushed that bill through. I doubt that. I doubt they even read the freaking bill. I doubt it. You really believe they sat down and they read all those pages? This is where, is where it comes from. And listen to this leaked audio here. 
Now, Shermine shared this. We have a major TikTok problem. Leaked audio of the ADL chief executive, Jonathan Greenblatt, freaking out because global youth aren't buying Israel's propaganda anymore. Listen to this. You hear that? This is leaked audio. We really have a TikTok problem. Notice he said it's not left and right, folks, right? Notice he said that? APAC, for example, they lobby Democrats and Republicans. When it comes to support for Israel, that is bipartisan. And that's really who a lot of these politicians work for. Instead of serving the American people, they're serving Israel. Is this the United States of America or is this the United States of Israel? That our community needs to put the same brains that gave us Tagli, the same brains that gave us all these other amazing innovations, need to put our energy toward this, like fast. Because again, like we've been chasing this left right divide, it's the wrong game. The real game is the next generation and the Hamas and their accomplices, the, idi the useful idiots in the West, are falling in line in ways that are terrifying. Last thing I'll just say, we saw a dramatic change in the language of the activists here in America on October the 8th. The language of groups that we've long tracked have long been problematic, like Students for Justice in Palestine and Jewish Voices for Peace. They flipped like this and went to like Iranian propaganda. So first of all, notice that he said groups that we have tracked. They've been watching certain organizations. This was never about China. This is about Israel. Don't believe me? Look at this. Defund Israel now says, oh, so that's why the ADL wants to ban TikTok. U.S. views on top opinionated Israel Hamas TikTok hashtags. Number of views in the seven days to December 22nd, 2023. Free Palestine over... 82.6 million free Palestine with the flag and a heart 35.4 million free Gaza 5.3 million free Palestine 4.8 million Palestine TikTok 4.7 million save Gaza 4.5 you guys get the point that is what is trending has been trending on TikTok since October 7th instead of the dance moves you see, they don't want you to talk about these things. They don't want you to be educated about the history, about the creation of Israel. They don't want you to know about the oppression of the Palestinian people. They don't want you to know about what has been happening to people in Gaza prior to October 7th. They want you to be dumb and dance. And we know how quickly our representatives can move for Israel. What you have to understand is that our government was not expecting the response to the war in Gaza that happened. They were not expecting that type of response. They were expecting people to stand with the state of Israel, but in turn, they got a wake up call and they realized a lot of the youth today 
know the truth about the creation of Israel. They know about the oppression of the Palestinian people. So when the pro-Palestinian protests started, the Biden administration was not prepared for that. They didn't know how to respond. The media even failed. Mainstream media narrative didn't work the way that it used to because the TikTok videos were so much more popular. So if people knew if they wanted the full story, they would go over to TikTok because they know mainstream media is captured by shareholders, by corporations. And why is that? In order to get support for war, you have to have a stronghold in the media. That is how you garner that support. And you know who told us about that? Julian Assange. Julian Assange warned people about that. Listen to this. It is. One of the hopeful things that I've discovered is that nearly every war that has started in the past 50 years has been a result of media lies. The media could have stopped it. If they had searched deep enough, if they hadn't reprinted government propaganda, they could have stopped it. But what does that mean? Well, that means basically populations don't like wars and populations have to be fooled into wars. Populations don't willingly and with open eyes go into a war. So if we have a good media environment, then we'll also have a peaceful environment. Julian Assange said that populations have to be fooled into wars. And that's what the media does. So the military industrial complex that controls the politicians, the Israeli lobby that controls the politicians, they get the politicians on board and then they get the media on board. Usually in the past, it has worked in some way, shape or form, but this time it's not working. And Israel has actually lost support. I want to show you the response from the CEO of TikTok. Shout out to uh, Eddie. He shared this TikTok CEO, Xiao Chu, responds to the TikTok ban being passed in the house. The video currently has 2.4 million likes and over 10 million views. So this is the CEO of TikTok. This is his response about the legislation. Hi, everyone. It's Show here. Just wanted to share some thoughts with our U.S. users about the disappointing vote in the House of Representatives. There has been a lot of misinformation, and I hope to clarify some things. First, thank you to our incredible community. You are what makes TikTok so special. Thank you for making your voices heard. Over the last few years, we have invested to keep your data safe and our platform free from outside manipulation. We have committed that we will continue to do so. This legislation, if signed into law, will lead to a ban of TikTok in the United States. Even the bill sponsors admit that that's their goal. This bill gives more power to a handful of other social media companies. It will also take billions of dollars out of the pockets of creators and small businesses. It will put more than 300,000 American jobs at risk, and it will take away your TikTok. We know how important TikTok is to all of you. It has given our 170 million users a platform to freely express themselves and has empowered more than 7 million businesses in the United States. Our platform matters to the small business owners who rely on TikTok to make ends meet, to the teachers who inspire millions of students to learn, and to everyone who discovers and finds joy on TikTok. We will not stop fighting and advocating for you. We will continue to do all we can, including exercising our legal rights to protect this amazing platform that we have built with you. We believe we can overcome this together. I encourage you to keep sharing your stories, share them with your friends, share them with your family, share them with your senators, protect your constitutional rights, make your voices heard. Love you all. So that was uh, his response and notice that he said how many people rely on TikTok just as they're for their uh, a source of employment. You know, there's a lot of creators on TikTok that have made a living off of their TikTok videos, not to mention the people that work with the company uh, in house as well. Now, I want to show you Nancy Pelosi's response, because again, here she is blaming China and she's talking about how China is uh, controlling the algorithm and all this jazz. Like, it's just these people, they're just paid to lie 
and to instill fear into the American people, uh, especially if it's uh, about a country that can compete with us economically. The vote this morning was a vote uh, to protect the national security of our country and the privacy of our citizens. I pointed out at the time that the TikTok in China broadcast into Taiwan that the Uyghurs love what the Chinese are doing. It's genocide. Uh, the people in that has never been confirmed. She's continuing to tell that lie. So she can say that what happened with the Uyghurs was genocide, which, by the way, that has been debunked multiple times. She can say that, but she won't acknowledge what's happening to the Palestinian people is genocide. That goes to show you who owns them. Hong Kong love the crushing of their democracy in Hong Kong. And the Tibetans talked about how they are suppressed on TikTok there and how they are misrepresented on TikTok there. So for these and other reasons, this is about human rights and privacy and democracy. But most importantly, if the Chinese government, as it does with ByteDance and, and its partnership, uh, controls the, controls the uh, algorithm, we are at their mercy if they let me pause for a second so all of a sudden now you are concerned about people being suppressed on social media you know how many people are suppressed on youtube and twitter and facebook you don't care about people being suppressed on this is the dumbest that was the dumbest example that she could have given control the data the privacy data of our people we are at their mercy so i was very pleased the vote was so conclusive there were 350 votes for this legislation we hope the senate will take up a privacy bill this is the patriot act 2.0 ladies and gentlemen you know like it's just it's it's wild now, Thomas Massey actually spoke on the House floor. Uh, he has a different opinion about this uh, piece of legislation. Uh, he calls out more so the data issue with China, and he also calls out the censorship issue. I want you to hear what he says about China in reference to data. This is pretty interesting. You know, we're sitting here with phones made in China. We're wearing suits made in China. We drove cars here with chips that are made in China. And there are foreign adversaries, and by golly, we're going to do something about it. What are we going to do? We're going to tell Americans they can't put a piece of software on their computer. Pause for a second. Everybody get what he's saying there? We drive cars that have chips in them that are made in China. The point that he's trying to make is that if China wanted to steal our data, they could have done this a long time ago. Are we supposed to get rid of those cars? Are we supposed to get rid of our cell phones? No. They can't go to certain websites that the president designates. So I urge my colleagues to oppose this well-intentioned bill because it will have bad consequences and I yield back the balance of my time. We need warrants in the FISA program. You shouldn't be able to, our government shouldn't be able to spy on Americans without a warrant, yet they are. Let's bring that to the floor and vote on it. These are the kind of cures we need, not the bill that's offered here today. The bill that's offered here today, even though I know it's offered genuinely, it could also be named the Facebook Protection and Enhancement Act, because it's not the American people who are going to benefit most from this. It will be Facebook. Their stock is going to go up if this bill should pass the Senate. Now, what are some ways that we could improve this bill? Well, it should at least have a sunset. I mean, that's the only reason we're able to debate whether FISA uh, should have warrants in it, because it sunsets. And what have we observed? FISA's been abused. That's my concern with this TikTok ban. It will be abused. If it's just banning TikTok and ByteDance and, and uh, copies of that, why does it need to be 13 pages long? Because it's not just about banning TikTok. That's the thing. It's not just about restricting TikTok. Pay attention to what he said. Why is that bill 13 pages long? And I know they say it doesn't ban it. It forces divestiture of the company. This sounds like when American companies try to do business in third world countries and a dictator says, well, you can do business here. You just got to give me your company and now you can continue to do business. We wouldn't let another country take over Ford Motor Company for selling Ford cars in their, in their country. Yet that's what we're wanting to do here. And again, 
you know, this, this is a cure that is worse than the disease. Who's going to be prosecuted by this bill? Is it ByteDance or TikTok? Will they be taken to court? No. I mean, they're the target of this, but how do you elicit or effect a ban on them? By prosecuting Americans. The only way you can ban TikTok and the other companies from being here is to say what this bill says, which is we will bring civil action, the government will bring a civil action suit against you if you so much as host them here. If you have an app store that allows them to be here, you are an American or an American company and you will be the target of this bill. Those are the only people who can be pursued under this bill. And I know it's in, in order to go after TikTok, or so they say. It's, it's wild. It's, it's crazy. And Thomas Massey and I disagree on a lot of things. But the censorship thing is one where I feel we do agree. Now, here's the funny part about all this. Those two guys, Chris and Harry, that were dancing around telling people we're Gen Z and we love Biden. Those two guys, those kids that were lying about Biden's accomplishments. I know Harry's system was also on breaking points. Remember those two guys? Okay, so now they're upset about this because now this is an issue that affects them directly. And Colin actually pointed it out. The influencers who made their money by being sellouts to the Democratic Party are losing their shit. This goes into Chris Mowry here. So he's the guy that does the videos with Harry. Congress and the White House owe it to the American people to show us the evidence they have regarding security concerns with TikTok. 170 million active users and the lack of transparency along with the confusion is unacceptable. People have built their livelihood on TikTok, including him. But you weren't thinking about that when you and Harry were all dancing in the videos and telling people we're for Biden, vote for Biden. Biden's great. You weren't thinking about that then. You weren't thinking about that when you were dancing in those videos and you were telling people, yeah, Trump's fascist. We got to stay away from him. And meanwhile, you were supporting Joe Biden, who was also fascist. They were paid to do it. That's why you weren't thinking about that. Karma is a motherfucker. I'll tell you, I'll tell you and I'll show you. They were paid propagandists. Thank you, Jobin Evans. Harry Sisson is a paid propagandist influencer of the Biden administration through a political action committee, but claims otherwise when called out on his TikTok lives and such. Do not listen to this slimy person. A lack of transparency won't win you votes. And he pointed out this part here where you'll see this is Harry Sisson here, right? It has the email inquiries there over 800,000 on TikTok. Like I said, this kid blew up overnight on Twitter. Like he joined in 2011, but he didn't have anywhere near that many followers. But you see how they pushed him through? And then here are the receipts here. And I think I showed this on the show before. Democracy Defense Action. There's Harry Sisson's name. And then there's Midas Touch. And we've covered them on the show before as well. Also, there's Harry's name right there. The state is New York, social media consulting, i.e. only account. And you can see the money pouring out here. A thousand dollars, seven thousand, five thousand, four thousand, two thousand dollars. Those are the receipt. These people were paid. Now they'll argue you down and say that they're not, but they were. So you see now, because this is something that directly affects them and their generation. Now they're speaking out. So here's Harry pushing back on it. All right, everybody, we have some massive breaking news. I'm standing in front of Congress right now and the House of Representatives just voted to ban TikTok. This was the final vote. There were 352 yeses of both Democrats and Republicans and there were 65 noes. 50 Democrats voted no and 15 Republicans voted no. Now, of course, the House passing it does not mean that TikTok is banned. It still needs to go through the Senate and they need to pass it and the president needs to sign it into law. And we don't even know if the Senate is going to take up the legislation 
legislation or even pass it. But look, my overall response to the House doing this is that this is a very bad idea. There are 170 million Americans who use TikTok. A lot of people get their news from TikTok. And taking that away from folks, I think, is not only silly, but I think it could also be a violation of free speech. Uh, you know, there's some very strong First Amendment concerns here. And one of my biggest concerns, which many have vocalized, is that for Democrats, I think this is a very bad idea to do in an election year. This is not a time to mess around. This is not a time to take these crazy risks and see how it plays out. This is a time to beat Donald Trump. That's what we should be focused on. So anyway, I am not a fan of the legislation. I think that there's a lot to consider here first. And uh, yeah, not good. But no, Biden was so great when you were in those videos. You were talking about just how great it was. Remember this, guys? He said, I think it's a violation of free speech. You think? Both parties are fascists. Now, Donald Trump also had responded to this too. And he flip-flopped on TikTok. At one point, he was against it. Now he's saying something different. So we don't really know how he really feels either. But listen to this. Frankly, there are a lot of people on TikTok that love it. There are a lot of young kids on TikTok who, who will go crazy without it. There are a lot of... Uh, users uh, there's you know a lot of good and there's a lot of bad with tiktok but the thing i don't like is that without tiktok you can make facebook bigger and i consider facebook to be an enemy of the people along with a lot of the media frankly there are a lot of people and facebook is where dreams go to die we can move on to uh, part two of type vnc Corey, when you're ready uh because honestly i don't consider facebook to be that entertaining <laughs> If Facebook is where I go to see like, you know, some of my friends that live in other states and see their pets and their kids and, you know, pictures of those types of things. But, you know, I mean, TikTok is pretty much really where it's at. But this brings up another question in reference to the 2024 election. Joe Biden was already struggling, uh, obviously, with the youth vote. Uh, but I'm sure now even more so. We got to look good. at these polls. And there's a lot of bad with TikTok. Uh -oh. Can but you cut him the off? The thing I don't like is that without TikTok, let me remove that. Sorry. I think he was still talking. <laughs> you still hear Donald Trump's voice in the background. All right, let's try this again. So under the political polls, check this out, guys. New general election poll, age 18 to 34, 49% for Donald Trump, 36% for Joe Biden. This is the, you know, so, and then the TikTok thing, what do you think is going to happen? You think all these Gen Z kids are going to come out and support you if they don't have their tick in their talk? You want to talk about getting massive amount of people in the streets? If you really want the youth to rise up, if you think that was something when you saw thousands of people in D.C. at the pro-Palestinian marches, if you really want to get that 5% of the population, are you kidding me? Are you kidding? You think these people are going to come out and support you and you take away their tick in their talk? People love TikTok. And it's not just Gen Z. I look on TikTok and I see people who are millennials. I see people who are boomers. I see people of all different ages. It's probably the most popular with the Gen Z, you know, generation. But people love TikTok. And it's better than Facebook. And they know it. So that goes to show you what may happen for the presidential election as well. And that's why I mentioned to Garland Nixon earlier. It's almost like the Democratic Party wants to lose. Either way, they still get the opportunity to fundraise. But make no mistake, this is fascism. I'm so sick of this, man. I'm tired of the censorship. I'm tired of violation, violating our free speech. I'm tired of people being canceled on platforms. I'm tired of it. What's next? They're coming after TikTok. What do you think is next? Rumble? YouTube? TikTok could just be the beginning.